Tada! It's finally here, Siftlings! Greetings again, this is Fayoth, and in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through my most difficult to put together and most demanding user wise build that I've ever done in Neo 2 and I think in Neo 1 as well. So, the approach we're taking here is that we're making a super powerful damage wise, super tanky defense wise and super fast moving character that will shred through the opposition, no fucks given, you will not have any trouble beating anything in way of the strong and come way of the wise, I think that by leveling up just this configuration you will be able to shred through any yokai or unlucky bystanders. So. Everything is complete as of today. This is perfectly tuned and finalized, but I am not using 170s. My armor is around plus 5 and my weapons are one of them plus 9, one of them is a plus 8 at 160. That means that you can squeeze even more damage out of this. Of course, there's always variables with Neo like getting better soul cores and so on and so forth, but we want to work with a very, very good version of each one of the moving pieces here. And if you have anything to suggest, I will be taking into account your ideas. My previous video about this build was its alpha version two days ago. I will be linking it in the description. Go throw some love there. I got a couple of messages from people suggesting things. It was still in the making. And by the end of this build, I'll also give you an alternative approach to swap up some pieces of equipment to make it more to your liking if you wish to do so. So, without further ado gear comes first twin peaks is a build about two spears the Matazas long spear and sakon spear now the thing with these spears is that they support two different sets japan's bravest in sakon's case and master of spears in mataza's case as you can see in sakon's i still have room for one perk but i didn't have an orange inheritable as of now, so when I do, I'll build it like this with active skill break. Active skill break is very, very nice because spears in general don't have the best break possible. So to trivialize humans as well, you will need a bit more break. What we want to have on our spears? Well, one is imbued fire, the high roll, not the eight. You want the high roll. And burn accumulation, life drain quick attack, attack bonus, constitution, Active skill break and break and on Sakons is exactly the same but we have imbue water and a high roll and saturation accumulation. These two are not the only ones you can use but from now on when I talk about accumulation and extra damage from something you will understand that I'm talking about one of these two elements. Warrior of the West has our bow to get the extra health. This is kind of trivial, not so trivial if you want to go the path of a different set, but we're going to talk about this later. The second ranged weapon can be whatever you want. Now, armor. It's four pieces Tosa and one piece of the exceptional one, the chest piece. That is for a very specific reason. Tosa is a lightweight armor that has shed toughness, but the exceptional ones is hard as shed and it will give you plus... 110 to your toughness as you can see here the idea is that on three of these pieces we will also want a white toughness perk to get above 200 and be hyper armored in certain situations so we're gonna go above 200 as you can see there i'm 203 at the moment perk wise this is very 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 important this is not a farmy build we're gonna have a couple of equipment and item drop but we want other things and we want them exactly as we see them we want key bonus amrita gauge a to have more key to use our active skills we need damage taken guarding in three pieces so we take zero damage through our guard whilst being attacked by elemental attacks we want attack on everything and toughness on three of our pieces so we get the 21 that we need to go above 200 on the Kiras, we want to forge and we want to forge with damage taken critical, minus 7.9. This in coordination with the Spear's defensive last ditch perks will make it almost impossible to kill in one swift strike. When you get into the red, you will see that your survivability goes through the roof. Very, very, very useful. 
Also, life recovery and breath absorption is a must for your chest piece. Elemental damage taken in general is great. Defense bonus Amrita Gage A is awesome and works well with key bonus Amrita Gage. So we'll have more key and we'll have higher defenses when our bar is charged. And because shifting is shit at the moment in Neo 2 and doesn't even come close to living weapon, we will never transform. Running speed here because I had spare space. Gloves. Twisting spear damage for initiation because twisting spear will eat people up. I am not very happy with the fact that I didn't get any clips of twisting spear, but they had to be really, really short because everything went in one hit and it wasn't fun at all. So you'll have to taste it for yourself and enjoy. Tenacity and faster winded recovery, as I always say, should go on the same armor piece. So if you're gonna swap something out at some point, you will need to reforge both of them and you will not have to swap perks on two armor pieces. Elemental damage taken whilst guarding again here. More lenience with the leg armor. Equipment item is totally optional, but we want dodge key consumption, running speed, attack and damage guarding. And here we want everything movement wise, dodge key consumption, dash key consumption, running speed, and of course attack. As you can see, I have toughness on my legs, toughness on my gloves and toughness on my helmet. If you use this exact configuration, you'll always be 203 toughness. It is extremely important and the way I didn't go with a different set because you want to be able to withstand the pushback when you are performing Merciless Barrage. Merciless Barrage is a very very good attack that gives you hyper armor hyper armor meaning that you will not be taken out of your combo easily but we want to reinforce this even further furthermore we will also be using tornado although it wasn't in the clips because i wanted to go for the appreciation factor and the wall factor there tornado is also excellent and one of the reasons we are using the exceptional ones because it gets a plus 20 percent damage but this is awesome so you want to use Tornado as well. Accessories. Yasakani Magatama. We want Yasakani with more melee damage when we are using poison against our enemy. We want either saturation on fire accumulation and we also want life recovery when absorbing Amrita. This will add to the other chest piece that we have and we will be getting back a good amount of health. Don't forget that our weapons also have drain on light attack. So if you go ham on a couple of enemies just with light attacks without activating any skills, you're getting a shitload of health back. Very, very, very nice. We have to go with Tosias Abacus on the second one because we are working with his spear. So damage over time is very, very nice for poison and for fire. I put some luck on it. Defense bonus courage B also very very nice for our defenses. Burn accumulation an enemy or water accumulation an enemy whatever you like. This will make proccing those effects a joke. For our guardian spirits. Tengen Kujaku which by the way means sky peacock or heavenly peacock since it's so majestic is our primary although i rarely do that i wanted to go with something more attack oriented or poison oriented and initially my build was using sirohami but the thing with tengen is that it indeed gives you the largest damage boost when you use high stance so before we use our active skill we attack with a normal attack once and then destroy them with a barrage of hits for our secondary we want to go okuro inu okuro inu is very nice because it gives you amrita gauge charge and fire damage which works really well with mataza spear as we have set it up for our course on Tengen, Yatsu no Kami, Magatsu Warrior, and Thunderstorm Oni B. And this is because we're getting more damage on poison enemies from Yatsu no Kami. Anima charge is always nice. And I have some Anima Amrita Gauge charge, sorry, on it just to improve my overall gameplay. 
We have Magatsu Warrior for the active skill damage, which is great, and whatever else drops. And we have Thunderstorm Oni B for the elemental damage, plus 5% on everything elemental wise, which is unbelievable for such a small core. It's just for attunement. Of course, having better perks on this will help if you have worse perks on this it will just diminish you a little but the build is already so strong that we don't give a shit about all that we want to focus on what's important we are continuing with what we will be using on Mirwise Pleiades Talisman and Extraction Talisman Pleiades will give you a faster charge of your Amrita gauge and extraction always needs to be up because it will help you a lot with getting Amrita and keeping your attack boost on for Tengen. Soul Purge I use to farm high quality drops. Because I have two spears, I sacrifice familiarity on one of them and kill a boss or something like that. So you get better luck and better attack with your other weapon. Very, very nice, very overlooked Onmyo. Sloth and Weakness, as you saw in the vid, because we want them slow and we want them weak and we want to get behind them and fuck them up. Carnage for the awesome damage. I have an Inspiring Gem here, don't pay that on mind. Protection Talisman, a quick change. If something goes wrong, if you are using Raging Strike, your health will be dangerously low for most of the cases i am not using ranging strike that much because of that but if you want to use it protection and quick change will save you from maybe some unlucky deaths and poison shuriken when we cannot apply poison otherwise if you are using cores that can cause some poison or if you're using sirohami you will not use that shuriken i'm telling you that you can also use noxious trap or you can put poison on one of your weapons but we want them poisoned so we can use the bonus from Ayasakani and the bonus from our Yatsunokami so we get a huge damage boost in melee whilst the enemy is poisoned skills and this is the most important part Tosa has a unique perk on it called singular mastery that means that only one skill can be allowed on every stance but that skill is much much more powerful so we want tornado on low stance and we want it with raging strike increases the damage dealt by chain active skills by 20 percent in exchange you will take damage while using them after tornado you will be about 50 percent and the enemy will be dead so you should be good but if you do not want to take that chance just go and give it another damage bonus twisting spear is amazing with the perk on our gloves and with our active skill damage you can put whatever you want on it as well you can go raging if you want and our most basic is piercing rain use whatever you can use to increase its damage but stay safe raging on piercing rain it will give you next to death's door every single time so i wouldn't suggest that i am not up for using all those glass cannony builds if you want to play dangerously go right ahead and use raging on piercing rain also by clicking l3 you have builds here on the left so you have can have a normal build for your spear and when you want to go ham with this specific configuration just use this pay attention if there is more than one skill here tosa is useless and you are doing this whole wrong guys this build is all about the little moving part is very very delicate balance if you fuck one thing up the whole thing goes to the garbage bin it will be useless so one skill per stance if you may and you will be shredding your guy in no time so this is pretty much it you will be getting honda and only honda as your clan forget toyotomi get honda Honda, if you manage to increase its rank and if you've been farming all this time with just another clan, you will be ready from the get-go, will give you 28% active skill damage and also 50% chance of going unscathed when you're full health and you get attacked. That's just a little bonus, but the 
percent on your active skills it's the huge like most important piece of the puzzle here yesterday i wanted to finalize my last week on my previous plan and i didn't swap that's why i didn't upload this and from yesterday to today it's night and day difference like yesterday my build was like mm. and i was like why the hell isn't this working and then I remember that I had to swap clans, and when I swapped clans, well, you saw the video, you see what's happening. There is one thing that's also very, very nice about this, and that is versatility. It is a double spear build, and I understand that for some people that might not be ideal, but you can also change that with any set that uses an accessory. So, for example, we can take out Matazas. And put Ichigo, Hitofuri, and Oyako Toshiro. That the set you get from uh, Toshiro when you fight him. So with this, you can have the three piece very easily. That is life equipment drop rate and increased luck when you absorb Amrita. Of course, you have to use his gourd as well. No, no, sorry, 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 that was a mistake on mine. You have to use the a multitude of Hope's Double Sword and Tokichiro's Gourd. And uh, the reason we are doing this is because those are all sets that use one weapon and also one accessory. We can try to squeeze in here different kinds of configurations, but if it's not dependent on an accessory will not be able to get a three piece bonus and that's an issue because we don't want our basic equipment to be reliant on just one set perk like with water of the west like you can get 164 life for free but if you could get like four percent melee attack out of this that'd be awesome that'd be a game changer but sadly you cannot do that so matazas has to go with the abacus and you can use Tokichiro's Gurd and his double swords from the first encounter. Ogo and Nagame Masamune to get his three piece from here. Do not remove more than one piece of Tosa for any reason, guys. If you do, you lose singular mastery and the build will be worthless. Okay. So this is pretty much it. It is not the easiest build to use, guys. I'm telling you, you restrict it to one skill per stance. And getting in there the correct way is of the utmost importance. What is very, very, very important as well is realize how you're gonna use each one of these three active skills. Tornado is very, very good if you are surrounded and you can squeeze in the first light attack so you can initiate the active skill. Twisting blade, twisting spear is awesome to initiate from afar and if you manage to land it on enemies that are not looking at you, you will probably end the fight in one swift blow. It's very impressive to look at as well. And for our star here, the piercing rain, it is destructive as you saw in the vid, but you really cannot swap out of it mid combo so know when to initiate because if you get caught up in it you will probably be dead before you are knocked back okay pay attention to this because it might be a lifesaver knowing when to go in and knowing when to bail so as always leave your comments in the comment section below i always appreciate the feedback i'd like to help the people who help me put this together as well i hope you like this i hope you use it and let me know how it worked for you the cons of this build is that you really need to develop two spears and that will be a shed load of materials and time but in my eyes it's worth it guys it's much more enjoyable than generic builds that i've done in the past that rely on very good balancing stats and so on and so forth because it has a very singular focus and it's very skill based skill based but it is also as i said very resilient and tanky like you will not feel like you're moving in there it is you kill them really fast or you're dead this build has some meat on its bones i'm telling you 
sub like and share if you found this useful i'm covering everything in neon 2 and until next time be well stay frosty and always try for perfection cheers <laughs>